Yo, g'day everyone, I'm Saltwater Steve. Welcome to the channel. This, this video is gonna be all about um, disease in mean marine fish. As you can see behind me, this is my tank. Um, it's about a thousand liters, about 800 liters in here and a couple hundred liters in the sump that runs behind. But oh, I've been dreading doing this video because the last week or so, I've been dealing with just diseases in fish. Um, in this one at the moment, my fish have had flukes, which is a, um, a parasite that gets on the skin, on the um, fins and stuff, into the gills of the fish. I'll, um, I'll chuck some pictures up of the little parasites, what flukes are, and mate, not, not a good thing. So I'll whack some pictures up of those. I'll um, shoot back now and we'll jump back and do a bit of footage of what, what the tank looked like few days before we ended up with a few fish catching these flukes and stuff and then I'll go through what, what I think caused it all and we'll go from there guys. So I'll, I'll shoot over now and we'll jump back to some footage of it last week or the week before. You. My scribbled angel here, I've decided to call him Mr. Squibble, just to play on Mr. Squiggle, so we'll call him Mr. Squibble. It's also a very I'll, um, I'll chuck a picture of Mr. Scribble, if anyone remembers him. As you can see from that video guys, the tank's looking a little bit emptier than it did that day. We're, um, we're missing two of my most favourite fish from in there. One being Stephen Regal, my regal angel. And the second one being Mr. Scribble, the scribbled angel. Unfortunately they both didn't make it. The regal was the first to go. I left the carport light on out here one night and um, I'm sure that that's what's um, caused him to stress out and break out in these flukes, which is, yeah. Well, you just notice a little bit of fuzz on his fins, but when I, when I found him dead, his gills were right open and really, really, really red. I do have him in there, but I don't think it's something you guys want to see. And when you film it, it doesn't really stick out too much anyway. But stress, stress is the main cause for disease in fish, whether it's stressing out from the water quality, whether they're stressing out because someone like me left the lights on all night, whether they're stressing out from being moved from one tank to another, being caught from the wild, stress. Stress will be the main cause of disease in, I'd say, every fish case. It's not an intentional cause of stress, but it is some form of stress which causes to disease in the fish. We're going to do another jump back in time now guys and I'll put some footage of some of the chaos. I got a bit of footage of, um, yeah, when I first actually noticed, before, well, after the regal had died and um, the scribble will look the worst next in line and, and the magnificent fox face, really he looked terrible too. I'll, I'll put this footage up and then I had power cuts after that. Um, oh, when the... Um, Scribbled Angel died. He got stuck on the overflow, which caused the tank to overflow. All the water had spilled out all over the floor. Lucky it was outside. But my tank, or well, my sump behind, was pretty much running on empty, which caused the heaters to trip, which is another thing which I didn't realize. And um, so when the tank got cold overnight one night, it tripped all the power. The water got really cold. It's just been a bloody nightmare after nightmare this week, to be honest. And I think that's what stressed out the, the scribble, which sent him over the edge. But I'll put some of this footage up and um, we'll see you again after that. Bill. Still trying to deal with this fluke now. I've got power cuts, trip and stuff. It's horrible. 
tank. I think the scribbled angel was stuck on the overflow. The tank's overflowed. It's been just nothing but a nightmare. Just another bit. So the scribbles in here now. The harlequin tusk fish is in there. It's been an absolute nightmare, guys. But just thought I'd give you a little show. This is the joys of the hobby. Yeah. Little tusk fish there. I don't know if it's just the time of night or what's happening. Tragedy. Absolute tragedy. Like I was saying in that video, guys, what a bloody tragedy. It's been, yeah, action packed. So once the tank overflowed and the sump emptied, I've got to like protect the thing that my heaters plug into so that they don't stay on and end up cooking the fish. But because of them, once the sump's gone down, they've actually, the, the glass tubing around the heaters has exploded and I didn't notice. So yeah, when the temperature did drop overnight and the, the heaters were supposed to kick in, that tripped the power which, um, yeah, allowed my water to get down to like 20 degrees. I'm not sure what that is in Fahrenheit, but I'll, um, I'll work it out and chuck it on there for you. And that, I think, is, yeah, what stressed out the poor scribble. I'll, um, I'll take you through and show you who's left and who survived. I ended up chucking the Harlequin Tusk fish, Elon Tusk, back in the tank, but figured out that 100% he is blind, so he's way too hard to feed if he's in here. So I've put him back in the sump and I can feed him by hand when he comes up for the poor little blind Elon Tusk. So that's what's left of me heater guys. So that's definitely why we had the, the dramas, oh nice, of, of it tripping when the heaters tried to kick in because it was smashed to pieces it would just trip the power and it baffled me for a while as to what was going on. This is little, little new Gobi Wan Kenobi. We got him last weekend. He's just in here quarantining and we're gonna put him inside. These are our feeder glass shrimp. Hopefully we can try and get them breeding. But to combat what we're doing with this thing, I'm quite lucky because I've got a fowler system which is a fish only with live rock. I can, um, I can use things like copper in the system but I haven't chose to use that method with this one. I've been um, dropping 25 litres of salt water out every day and replacing it with 25 litres of RODI water, which is just um, reverse osmosis deionised or something like that, which just has all the minerals and stuff taken out of it and just replenishing it with that. So my plan is to bring my salinity down from a 1.027 or 35 parts per thousand at the moment, it's, I've brought it down to 1.019, which works out to be about 25 parts per thousand. And hopefully by the end of, um, or mid next week, I will have brought it down to 1.010, which is about 14 or 15 parts per thousand. And that should um, alleviate any of the parasites that are in here. Fingers crossed that does the trick. Quite a shame that we've lost these fish, but hey, it's part of the thing and I'll definitely have learnt my lesson now to not leave that carport light on anymore. But so here's my 40 watt UV sterilizer back there and my ozone and still ended up with these flukes going through. Oh, Elon Tusk's not out and about just yet. So I've come out this morning guys and Eric Banifish really ain't looking too good. His eyes are going a bit cloudy and he's just hanging around at the top. Hopefully we can um, just keep doing this, taking out the 25 litres of um, salt water and replacing it with the fresh water trying to drop our salinity. Just a shame, hopefully, hopefully he comes through. Tragic. I hope you have enjoyed watching this one guys. It's been a bit of a sad one, but you can't 
get away from diseases in reef tanks. Unless you quarantine every single thing you're putting in there and you're just super vigilant and don't make any mistakes, it's pretty much inevitable at one stage or another in, in the hobby, you will end up with a disease in your tank. Um, apart from that, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you smash that like button and if you want to see more, subscribe guys. And until next time, stay salty. You.